Jesus says, Lo, I stand at the door and knock. Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart today. Additions to God's law reflect upon his wisdom as if he had left out something which was needed and which man could supply. In one way or other, they always lead man to disobey God. How thankful ought we to be for the written word of God. Never let us think that the religion of the Bible can be improved by any human addition, either in doctrine or practice. Our blessed Lord spoke of their traditions as inventions of their own, and pointed out one instance in which this was very clear, that of their transgressing the fifth commandment. When a parent's wants called for assistance, they pleaded that they had devoted to the temple all they could spare, even though they did not part with it, and therefore the parents must expect nothing from them. This was making the commandment of God of no effect. The doom of hypocrites is put in a little compass. In vain do they worship me. It will neither please God nor profit themselves. They trust in vanity, and vanity will be their recompense. Verses 10 through 20 Christ shows that a defilement they ought to fear was not from what entered their mouth as food, but from what came out of their mouth, which showed the wickedness of their hearts. Nothing will last in the soul but the regenerating graces of the Holy Spirit and nothing should be admitted into the church but what is from above. Therefore, whoever is offended by a plain, seasonable declaration of the truth, we should not be troubled at it. The disciples asked to be better taught as to this matter. Where a weak head doubts concerning any word of Christ, an upright heart and a willing mind seeks for instruction. It is the heart that is desperately wicked. Jeremiah 17 verse 9 for there is no sin in word or deed which was not first in the heart. They all come out of the man and are fruits of that wickedness which is in the heart and is wrought there. When Christ teaches, he will show men the deceitfulness and wickedness of their own hearts. He will teach them to humble themselves and to seek to be cleansed in the fountain opened for sin and uncleanness. Verses 21 through 28. The dark corners of the country, the most remote, shall share Christ's influences. Afterwards, the ends of the earth shall see his salvation. The distress and trouble of her family brought a woman to Christ. And though it is need that drives us to Christ, yet we shall not therefore be driven from him. She did not limit Christ to any particular instance of mercy, but mercy, mercy is what she begged for. She bleeds not merit, but depends upon mercy. It is the duty of parents to pray for their children and to be earnest in prayer for them, especially for their souls. Have you a son, a daughter, grievously vexed with a proud devil, an unclean devil, a malicious devil, led captive by him at his will? This is a case more deplorable than that of bodily possession, and you, and you must bring them by faith and prayer to Christ, who alone is able to heal them. Many methods of Christ's providence, especially of his grace, in dealing with his people, which are dark and perplexing, are be explained by this story, which teaches that there may be love in Christ's heart while there are frowns in his face. And it encourages us, though he seems ready to slay us, yet to trust in him. Those whom Christ intends most to honor, he humbles to feel their own unworthiness. A proud, unhumbled heart would not have borne this, but she turned it into an argument to support her request. The state of this woman is an emblem of the state of a sinner deeply conscious of the misery of his soul. The least of Christ is precious to a believer, even the very crumbs of the bread of life. Of all graces, faith honors Christ most. Therefore, of all graces, Christ honors faith most. He cures her daughter. He spake, and it was done. From hence, let such as seek help from the Lord and receive no gracious answer, learn to turn even their unworthiness and discouragements into pleas for mercy. Verses 29-39 through 39. 
Whatever our case is, the only way to find ease and relief is to lay it at Christ's feet, to submit it to him and refer it to his disposal. Those who would have spiritual healing from Christ must be ruled as he pleases. See what work sin has made, what various diseases human bodies are subject to. Here such diseases as fancy could neither guess the cause or the cure of, yet these were subject to the command of Christ. The spiritual cures that Christ works are wonderful. When blind souls are made to see by faith, the dumb to speak in prayer, the maimed and the lame to walk in holy obedience, it is to be wondered at. His power was also shown to the multitude in the plentiful provision he made for them. The manner is much the same as before. All did eat and were filled. Those whom Christ feeds, he fills. Of Christ there is bread enough and to spare. Supplies of grace for more than seek it, and for those that seek for more. Christ sent away the people. Though he had fed them twice, they must not look for miracles to find the daily bread. Let them go home to their callings and their own tables. Lord, increase our faith and pardon our unbelief. Teach us to live upon thy fullness and bounty for all things pertaining to this life and that which is to come. <laughs>